Engineer 775 here with Ram Pumps Part 2. Appreciate the feedback and the questions on Part 1 and also the overview. Watch those in order. The overview, then Part 1, and now Part 2 is building the Ram Pump. A couple of questions I got on Part 1 was, how do I build a Ram for my well? You cannot build a Ram for a well. You can, but it won't work. There's no dynamic flow out of a well. To You need flow um, of water to run the Ram. So. Uh, we're going to do a separate series on how to get water out of your well and everything from solar pumps to homemade hand pumps to some of the pumps that are out there on the market today and um, we're going to go I'm just I'm going to build one we'll do one together where we actually um, build a cylinder uh, and put it in a well and uh, actually you can manually pump the water out and there's a lot of different ways to do that and then of course there's some aftermarket but boy they're ex they are expensive so can't put a ram pump in a well but you can build a pump for your wells one of the other things want a note uh, I wanted to I didn't cover very well uh, was I had this formula the volume um, of your input times your fall divided by your elevation times your efficiency uh, equals the amount of water that this pump is going to push up the hill to your to your homestead now the 1440 I forgot to tell you that's the number of minutes in a day so the D was gallons and then the 1440 is the number of minutes so it's, it would be number of minutes in a day so it would be the amount of gallons per day and that's usually what you're looking for when you're figuring things out how many gallons per day is my family using how many gallons per day are the uh, cows, pigs, chickens drinking. How many gallons a day do I need for um, my garden? And then um, just use that 1440 because that's the number of minutes in a day. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's let's build this pump. Again, you're going to see a lot of standard parts here. Unions, very important. I like to put unions in the beginning and the end of the pump so that I can take the pump out of service and uh, work on it if I need to monkey around with chase, change valves just playing around but I like, you don't have to have them it just makes it makes it nicer let's start putting this thing together so we start again everything's inch and a quarter the drive pipes inch and a quarter so the beginning of the pump needs to be inch and a quarter I like valves I get using a gate valve to get this pump started letting the water into the into the ram Again, a parts list will be at the end. Might not include all the, the nipples. You can change these lengths. You can make this thing any length you want, really. Try to make it as compact as possible, I guess, is the best. Putting in a T. Again, I'm not gonna tighten up in anything just for sake of this time that I have on this video. And so don't wanna waste your time either. Now I get to the waste valve, or the impetus valve. It's the valve that is, you're gonna hear thumping away um, like a heartbeat. The swing and check valve, you're going to hear this thing. Again, it's going to have water. It's going to sound a little different with the water, but about the same. You want to make sure on every check valve, swing and check valve, there's an arrow. The arrow has to point down. The arrow has to point down. The, the water is going to be picking us up and wasting out of here and hitting and stopping and rebounding. We'll show you that when we actually start start this baby up okay I'm gonna continue gonna keep going to the next part all right after that comes a check valve and the check valve for the arrow same identical check valve inch and a quarter check valve and we're going to make sure that arrow is pointing downstream okay I just do everything in order here next thing another close nipple and this pump I built a couple years ago. It's got a little rust, but it's fine. Put some new Teflon on it. It's good to go. All right, now I'm gonna put the pressure vessel on. Okay, pressure vessels. I have some pieces of a pressure vessel here. Again, I'm just using this as three inch schedule 40. I'm not gonna glue it together right now. You can cap it off. And then you can put that right on the T. Um, and uh, again, what I do? Oh yeah, <laughs> getting ahead of myself. Make a obviously you gotta adjust to the size of that. But when you make these pressure vessels, 
You can put bicycle tubes, wheelbarrow tubes in them, but I like to use closed cell foam. Closed cell, closed cell foam, like you get in uh, swimming noodles. Um, it's a foam, it, it can never get waterlogged. And so I've packed them in, I put half a chamber full of noodles or closed cell foam, and every cycle, every rebound, um, the, the, the foam compresses and then it releases. And it's worked real well. And even if this gets waterlogged, you know, like uh, water will take on um, the air after a while after being compressed, you can unscrew this and relieve the pressure, shut your inside outside valve off, and start over. It might run without doing any fancy snifters, and I'll talk about those later on. Um, it'll run for a, quite a while. It'll run for several weeks without having to make any adjustments. It'll actually run a lot longer than that, but if you have questions about that, fire away. All right, I'm going to keep going, and I'll put the bladder on last because it's easier to build that way. Now, after I've got my valves in, I want to reduce down to half the diameter. Well, they don't make pipe half of inch and a quarter so I went with uh, three quarter because just go with standard stuff so I'm reducing down to three quarter you want your drive your drive pipe is twice the size of your delivery or your delivery is a half the size of your drive and the other thing I like to do with a ram is I like to let it stand on its own if it's not being bolted down or strapped down Oh my goodness, there we go. I like to put an elbow in. There's a little bit of friction, but what I gain out of it, you'll see here in a minute, is that the pump will actually stand, will stand on its own. And that just makes it nice when you're working on it, especially installing I'm installing the little pressure gauge here. That tells me a lot, tells me what the ram's capable of doing before I even install a delivery line. Okay, and then I put an outside, this is a very important valve here, the outside valve allows me to um, actually start this ram easier. And I'll show you that. Oh, watch out. Parts falling off the table. Again, and what do I got here at the end? I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna set this thing up. But there, the ram stays on its own, very simple. And I'm putting a union on the end, and then my delivery pipe. My delivery pipe, I have a piece of PEX here. You can use Schedule 40, and I just have a barb fitting. And so you can put wherever you're taking your water to, just put a, put a garden hose if you want to. Um, Schedule 40 is good. Black pipe, PEX, garden hose. It doesn't much matter. There's every... There'll be people that will make comments, you need to do this and you do that. Yes, you can improve the efficiency of these, but again, this this is, we've just built a ram pump. Now, I need to uh, show you the, the bladder on it. Okay, just put this on here. There's the ram pump. I hope that didn't take too long. And like many things, you got extra parts. No, I'm just kidding. No extra parts. That's from a different pump. All right, there's the ram pump. And uh, we will go into part three, which will actually be, okay, great. Does it work? How do you start it up? How do you make adjustments? We're gonna make, I'm gonna show you just a very simple, cool adjustment that you can, uh, tune this thing down, you can decrease the amount of water that's being pumped, or you can increase the amount of water that's being pumped. And I uh, will show you that, but I really need to take it down to the creek and the pond in order to show you that. And that will be part three, ram pump startup, some of the problems you run into, some of the mistakes. A lot of people get frustrated, they get everything in, and they can't get their ram started. So um, part three will be ram startup. If you have any questions on the build of the ram, uh, let me know. I uh, appreciate them and all the comments. See this thing is falling apart on me. It's because I didn't have time to tighten it up. Okay, great. On to part three. Send your questions.